Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Today, to continue our series on the Razor Archive videos, talking about one of the most holy grail of all Gillette razors you'll ever come across, the bottom dial fat boy. Now, the very first thing you'll notice is what is with that case? What is going on? You know, the, the little magnifier is in the wrong spot. And it's like twice as tall. Look at this. Look at the difference in height here. This is it. This is one of the original Gillette adjustable razors. This came out right after the toggle. Um, all of the research that Gillette had put into the, the quick opening toggle razor, as they called it, was, was put into this. And this was actually the code word inside of Gillette for this razor was Aquos. A-Q-O-S-S. -S. So when we've come across various... Uh, company documents and done research at Procter & Gamble, it's always referred to as Aquos. And I don't know exactly what that stands for because I didn't see a uh, breakdown of the abbreviation. I can infer and take a wild guess that it means adjustable, quick opening. And the last two parts, I'm going to take a wild guess and say super speed, which you would say that's not a super speed, but to Gillette's mind, this was a continuation of the super speed. They were rocking the super speed trio. People were liking the fact that you could adjust it and they wanted to put it into one handle. So they didn't, it doesn't say fat boy on here, it says adjustable. That was the big word. This was the Gillette's adjustable design. Now they called the fat boy the $1.95 or the 195 adjustable. They did call the slim the slim adjustable. They did not call this the bottom dial. It was just referred to as the 195 adjustable. It's right there guys, it's right there, I'm not making it up. So we call it today bottom dial because obviously the adjustment dial is at the bottom. Now this is one of six variations of this razor. There are five other variations. Uh, this is one of the least common ones. This has an aluminum handle and a black aluminum anodized um, adjustment knob. And the top part, the head, is brass nickel plated like, like normal. This one has no date code on it. So that's kind of another interesting feature. And this was a test market razor. So the six variations of the bottom dial um, represent different weights of handles. So they had a brass handle, they had an aluminum handle. They also had one through five dials, one through nine dials. Um, and so different combinations thereof, you know, black, not black. Um, and those different variations are all kind of what led to the fat boy we know today. Uh, we did acquire original um, market materials, test market materials and reports that indicated that one of the problems people had with this razor was the dial was right next to the adjust, or the dial was right next to the twist open knob. And so this is a little confusing. Okay, this one opens it, this one adjusts it. So that's why later on, Gillette put this guy up here at the top. And um, because of that, Anything that a company does in low numbers will be rare and will be sought after, you know, decades later, and this is no different. So I was really, really fortunate to acquire this from a customer who contacted us, and he had said that his dad bought this at a department store, and funny enough, the town he was in was one of the towns listed as a test market city, because Gillette had, I think, six or seven cities across the country that were going to be used for test marketing these razors and that was one of the cities so it is kind of convenient. Now I didn't get the uh, the case with it. Uh, the customer couldn't find the case and they were worried it got thrown away and my, my heart just dropped because I think these cases are harder to find than the razors. In 15 years of buying and selling razors at this point, um, this is the only case I've ever come across that was in good condition. I did have another one that had a broken um, ear on it, but this is my only case. It's very, very prized possession. In fact, I was more excited about the case than the razor, if you can believe it. But I'm also not someone who shaves usually with my collection pieces, so I always just like to have little, a little sleeping bag to put it to sleep at night. Say, yep, I got it. It's all tucked in. It's in its case. It's, it's where it belongs, because it does belong in a museum, so to speak. On a rarity scale, I would give the bottom dial fat boy one being it's at a thrift store anytime you go out and five it belongs at a museum people. I would give it five out of five 
right off the bat, in any condition. I would say a bottom dial is going to be uh, a you know four and a half, five in any condition. Certainly with the with the, with the case, it's a five out of five. No no question about it. Um, very very cool. And I was so fortunate that it was in such beautiful condition when we got it. And uh, again, if you know me, I don't touch my collection pieces. The most I usually do is wipe them off with a t-shirt or maybe a polishing cloth, but I don't even try to use a polishing cloth. Usually just a clean cotton towel uh, is all I really want to use on them. I don't want to touch them. I want to preserve them and appreciate them for exactly what they are. Um, very cool piece of history. You notice also inside it looks like a super speed, looks nothing like your normal uh, fat boy or even like the toggles inside. So again, Gillette is still experimenting with the, the way they're going to move the blade up and down and, and, and create the different blade gap and blade angle that they need for adjusting. Uh, very cool piece of history. So happy to have one. If you know something about the bottom dial razors that I don't know, um, please leave a comment below. And if you do, you are entered into win this, the official Razor Emporium t-shirt. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Thank you for being part of our community here. And leave a comment, subscribe, like the video, share it with a buddy of yours, put it on a forum somewhere, whatever you wanna do. We love being a resource for you guys, the wet shaving world. And we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving.